Hi, I'm Steve Shelburne, owner and operator of Shelburne RV here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. Welcome back to Shelburne RV. I hope everybody had a, a great and happy uh, Thanksgiving with your families and you got plenty to eat and enough time off. That's always important to spend time with your family. But welcome back to Shelburne RV. We had a uh, we had a good time with our family. Didn't have much going on. Did did have this I had to deal with while while uh, you guys were off on break. You know that you, you, you try to run a business and then you know over the holiday weekends you got people up here on the property poking around and looking at your campers and seeing what they could steal and you know it's it's just it's just the world we live in unfortunately and that one there set the alarm off on the building so at least at least we got notified that there was a problem and we didn't catch him but at least the siren kind of scared him off but you know that's just kind of what we deal with nowadays just had to keep an eye on everything just just sucks work hard and somebody tries to steal it from you but we're back here on a monday it's uh it's not really sunny out but it ain't freezing so actually pretty nice outside today we've got a uh we've got a little bumper pull in there lewis is going to be working on some blowout damage um that little sunset trail in there i think they've got the uh they've got the uh, uh roof sealant done on that i do have a swintech slide out coming in today on a on a big tiffin motorhome that's got some problems and i've got another basement air that's being dropped off today that we've got to do some work on so i'm gonna get the boys going here this morning then i'm gonna take you around and we'll kind of see what's going on here Welcome back. So Lewis has been working on this Lance bumper pull camper and we got done doing some other stuff with it, but it actually had some blowout damage up underneath there. So he's gone in there, you can see the metal patch he's got in there and got everything sealed and all back ready to go. So this one here, just gotta put the tire on and it's ready. So that's Hurricane Class A that came in. We've, we've sealed tech this thing multiple times and he's still got some water in one of the cabinets right here. Now we didn't see anything in the seal tech around those ladder rungs, but it is a little suspicious right there. We're gonna go ahead and seal that up along with the lights and that little bubble light you see right there. But he's had one other little issue in here um, that we've got going on. And you can kind of see it right here in the ceiling. You can see that stainage right there. So something's been leaking in right there. Let me take you up on the roof and kind of show you what we found. So we got the looking up here on the roof and this is about the area where we had the problem. Now, Mr. Scott, when we looked at this originally, we pulled this loose and there was a bunch of debris up in here. So he's washed this off now. We're gonna go in here and seal around these screws. And the seam obviously doesn't look like it's been sealed very well. And then you can see the insert trim. That's a little challenging because it's painted um, so you can't just put a white or a black in here because it ain't going to look right. It's still it's still in pretty good shape. So we're going to get this insert trim put back in there and then seal across the top of that and see if we can slow that leak down. Okay, so Lewis and I, I didn't get no video of it because it really was a pretty simple fix on that Winnebago basement air. He came in and, of course, he has the original, that is the original control board that was in that. And so we were not getting any zone 2 compressor whatsoever. So I updated it with the new one, put it in there. It, it came on, clicked, and went boom. Look at that. Burned the tap right out of the back of the board. So I've never seen that before. Um, and that's actually on the outdoor fan high relay tap that it blew out of there. So, yeah, that's kind of a first for me. So I called our friends over at Eric Cell and and uh you know i actually put another board in it and we ran it and it ran fine so evidently we just had a, a weak component on that board so yeah it was just kind of strange but but we did we did run it we ran it for about an hour we had 23 degree uh uh temperature drop on that so um ran great that was the only thing wrong with it the amp draws were within a half an amp of each other so we got him all fixed up and he's gone gone out the door so that one was an easy one. I really didn't take no video of because it, it was just a, it was a quick, simple fix, just a, just a bad control board. 
So Lewis and I had a Winnebago Ultimate Advantage come in. A customer stated that the basement air had a problem. And I'm gonna show you this. I don't know how well you can see. You can't really see with the light right there. Let's go over here to this other side. Look at that ductwork right there on the discharge. Let me see if I can get a little better look here. We'll see if we can get up here and see. So Lewis has got this basement air out of here now. And you know, the return looks pretty good. You can see where all that got burnt. It's all burned up. So now let's look at, there you go. That is all burned up. But now look at this. That right there is the reason why we tell you to keep the filters clean. This, this air conditioner, even if we had fixed that, it, that was gonna keep it from running. So a little bit of a blessing that we pulled this out. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull the cover. We're gonna clean the whole interior, make sure the drain's done. Um, definitely go ahead and change the bearing on the outdoor fan motor, because if we've gone this far, that's the one thing I always have trouble with. We saw a few videos back where we had this little shadow cruiser that had some, all that wall was rotted out and damaged because of that window. So now they've got the new paneling in it, and they've got it all sealed up and ready to ship out. So Lewis has got that uh, basement air on that Winnebago you saw yesterday where the, uh, the exhaust had actually burned up the discharge. We actually got the unit all cleaned out. We ran it. It runs perfect. I've actually been in touch with Winnebago to see if I could buy that uh, discharge assembly. Unfortunately, that is no longer available. So, as you can see, it's pretty bad. So I've contacted my friend George down at GNL Services, and he's actually going to build me a new one of those. So we'll take it all, take it down here, and drop it off with my driver, and he's going to run it down to Mr. George, and they're going to get me all fixed up. But unfortunately, that's the way it goes sometimes with some of the older RVs. I mean, I would have thought this was pretty much the same all the way through, but evidently it's not. This this particular one is a little bit different. So part of it, I guess. All right, so we had this 4KW generator that came in all oh, a week or so ago, and this thing was loaded um, with mice, squirrels. I don't know what got into it. Something got in there and just made the doggonest mess you ever seen in your life. Um, I cleaned and cleaned and cleaned on it. The customer actually brought a whole bunch of parts uh, to put back in this thing. I put it all back together um now we're having uh there's something going on with the stator so you know at what point do you just go hey we've spent too much money um i just don't know where the bottom is on this thing because because obviously we don't know what's been chewed up so we did have a 4,000 um watt generator um in stock that we were able to pull out of our stock brand new and that i've been kind of sitting on because they've been kind of hard to get to get a hold of uh, and it is going on that little Class C Freedom Elite right there. And so we actually got the generator installed. Everything was, was good. Ran for like two minutes. Ran out of fuel. So I got to investigating it, and I, and I got to following the fuel line from the generator back through the chassis to the tank. And lo and behold, the mice, squirrels, I don't know what got a hold of this thing. I actually got in there and chewed the fuel line up. So tomorrow we're going to try to back that onto our lift and uh, see if we can drop the fuel tank down far enough or maybe we can reach up in there and, and pull a new fuel line for it. But, you know, that's the problem when these things sit for so long. You know, they get sometimes they get all chewed up. And, and unfortunately, that's, you know, the only, the only way we're going to fix it. So... Let me take you in here and show you. I'm going to give you the update on this Furion. It's a brand new Furion refrigerator because I actually did some Diag on it uh, yesterday. So let's go in here and talk about it right quick. So after doing a little bit more Diag on this, I want to show you kind of what happened here because there's some Wago connectors that were a little iffy. So I'm going to turn the camera around and show this to you. So I got to noticing on this thing when I was really looking at it, these Wago connectors, which we've talked about Wago before. That's a good connector. But when they did this from the factory, and it's probably hard to see um, here in the video, they didn't, they, there's wires hanging out right there. They didn't get this fixed right. And some little hairs of wire 
were sticking through here and they looked like they were touching the case. Now, I don't know that that was anything, but when we first initially tested this, this, um, this refrigerator uh, compressor would not come on. So I kind of separated those wires just to get it away from the case. And we, we did go ahead and run it for a period of about six and a half hours. Now we did have um, negative 29 degrees in the freezer, but we could not get below 49 degrees in the refrigerator space. And so after talking to the customer um, late yesterday, that's exactly what he was getting when he was testing. So I don't know, you know, the wire situation may have just been something when we moved it around, but uh, you know, obviously, obviously it could have been something. So we've contacted Furion. They're actually gonna send out a brand new refrigerator because evidently that's a problem. The refrigerator not getting that low. Um, asked them, hey, do you, do you want the old refrigerator back? No, we just have to have a picture of the VIN number. You need to take a baseball bat and destroy it and then paint it with some spray paint. Now, that's kind of interesting to me. I've never had anybody tell me I had to take a baseball bat to a refrigerator, you know, throw it in a dumpster and get it gone was normally what we do. But, you know, if that's what they want. I guess that's what we're going to do. Cousin Gary will be able to take out some some anxiety on the refrigerator, I guess. But anyways, um, when we get that in, I'll uh, show you the swap out on that. So just want to kind of give you guys an update on that. All right, so Cousin Gary's out here working on an MPG ultralight. Cousin Gary, tell me what you got going on here. Uh, cooling unit ruptured. And what brand of refrigerator? Dometic. Dometic, okay. So, blowed out refrigerator. So, we're going to put a Pines rebuilt unit in that, I'm assuming? Yep. All righty. So, that's what Cousin Gary's working on. Uh, Lewis is back here working on another one of these service electric trailers that just came in. So gonna get another air conditioner and a lower assembly put on this one. So he's working on that right now. So one thing I really haven't kind of showed you guys this week, cause I've been, I've been real busy with other stuff and I, I just, I just hadn't taken no video, but you can see that new chain link fence. Well, it's new for this area. It's not new for the property. Um, I actually had that up on another end of the property that really the fence wasn't doing anything. So John Fish and I, ripped all that down pulled the posts out of the ground with my excavator and then i have a uh i have a uh post hole digger auger for my excavator so we were able to get those posts put in fairly quick um reuse the chain link fence just had to go buy some new ties for it and then i was able to actually string new i had new bob wire that we actually strung across the top of that because you guys kind of saw the picture from the first the, the first video i did you know we had somebody poking around in here this weekend and, and unfortunately that area over there is problematic at best so i got that up it's at least stopped down to that point but that is heavily 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 wooded um I'm gonna try to add some more fencing later, but I'm just trying to slow the traffic down because this area here obviously has been, you know, a little bit of a nightmare. They pretty much walk straight through here. So at least got that slowed down, but that's what I've been kind of working on out here the last couple days. I really haven't shown no video of it because I've just, I've just been trying to get it knocked out and that was a little bit of a chore. Taking the post and all that down wasn't the problem. It was pulling that old fence. It's been sitting in the same place for probably 30 years. It was pretty well woven into the ground so that was a little bit of a chore but anyways just thought i'd share that with you guys i want to take you in here real quick zach's been working on this um bunk over this class c and he's getting real close i just want to kind of show you guys what's going on there so he's got all this rebuilt he went in here and added a whole bunch of wood rebuilt all those stringers rebuilt all that this is better than new and so now he's got to get that file on put on there so this thing is has been a chore but it is a lot sturdier than what the OEM had. And so now it shouldn't flex as much as it was, but he's got to get all the file on, put on there, and then we're going to get it wrapped and resealed. What are you doing, Cousin Gary? Oh, getting ready to get this cooling unit out of here. So this is the one we looked at the other day, but it's, yeah, you can see it's all, it's ruptured back here in the boiler assembly, which is not uncommon. Now the pines units that we'll put back in there, they use heavier tubing right there and that'll never happen. No more fire hazard. 
So cousin Gary's got the cooling unit out of this refrigerator, but you can see where all that sodium chromate ruptured out of there. But something else I want to show you guys about this. And if you haven't watched my video, if you haven't watched my video on the Dometic RM1350 debunked, we talk about this right here in the video. Now, remember in that video, we talk about how these coils have to have mastic between those and the case. This is a barrier. This keeps this cooling unit from actually cooling correctly. Now, people ask, why do they put that on there? Well, because when we pulled it out, all the foam doesn't stick to that. Now, typically, when, whenever we built these, um, we would always put uh, press and seal in here to uh, keep that in case you ever had to pull it back out. But they use tin foil, and I'm trying to peel this off here because I'm going to show you how much tin foil. But see, see, there's the magic right there. See the mastic right there? The problem is that mastic needs to be up against those fins that are inside the refrigerator. That's what transfers the temperature in here. This is a barrier. And as I said in the videos before, you know, we've seen significant change in temperature with this between that. So that's just the wrong way to do that. When we put that in there now, it's all mastic. The mastic from the coil is against those fins inside the refrigerator. And you can see Cousin Gary's got this one just about put all back together. But this is obviously an Amish rebuilt unit. And they go in here and fix this problem in the boiler assembly, put heavier tubing in there, and it never will rupture, never have a fire problem. So now that we've got it updated and have it in there, we'll have significant temperature change just because of the tinfoil being gone between the coil and the actual back of the refrigerator. So we got this Freedom light that we talked about yesterday with the generator. Now we've got the fuel tank dropped down just enough where Brandon, as you can see, is way back up inside there. And he has found the spot that the mice have chewed in. So we're gonna pull that out and get that fuel line piece back in. Okay, so you guys have seen this leprechaun. It is back again. It's been like the bad penny around Shelburne RV and it keeps coming back because he has leaking going on in that top bunk. I finally figured out where the leak is at. Let me get up here and show you what's going on. Okay, so the panel inside there is off. So I was able to look way up inside there while the boys put the water to it. And you can see it's still wet. And what I got to noticing was the water was dripping in this area. So I took a flashlight and shined it from the inside out. And we got to noticing, now I have poked through that. That's something that I did. It wasn't like that. But you can see, it's like the fiberglass had some bad spots in it and they just painted over it. And now it's just kind of wore itself out. So the water's leaking right there. So, and there's another spot right there, look at that. So, you know, we spent a bunch of time clearing this and sealing everything and kind of find out it's a failure in, in, the, uh, in the fiberglass. So what's the solution for the C-Class with the holes in the fiberglass? You know, the bad part is I was talking to the customer about it and you know, fiberglass inside, outside, more paint. That's a metallic black, which is gonna be, it's gonna be a pain to paint, you know, and get it matched right and do all that. So, you know, how much money does the guy wanna spend? I mean, it just, it's just such a nightmare on, on the repair side of it. Um, now, one thing that we did talk about was, you know, wrapping the top piece of that with Diamond Shield. Um, you know, that Diamond Shield, once you put it on there, that stuff's impossible to get off. Now, the only bad part is that stuff's only good for about, you know, three years and then it had to come off anyways, but he's not planning on keeping it that long. It doesn't sound like. So, you know, again, what are the options? It's, you know, it can be very expensive or low cost, but, you know, I think for the moment we're gonna try, we're gonna try the Diamond Shield and put it on there and see if that'll, that'll stop it. But, you know, it's just a, it's just a bad deal. So the boys have pulled in here a big Seneca Super C Freightliner front end. And customer brought this in saying that the floor had some issues. Now Brandon's gonna kind of show you, go ahead and show us what you got going on there, Brandon. That floor, you can see that it's just got some, just got some problems. Now, 
we got the noticing down here and you can see i've taken this panel that was in here out go ahead brain so you can see where that has just really sagged down now the thing that we noticed was there's moisture in here all this has got some moisture on here now you guys have seen this stuff before this basket weave plastic material this is the stuff that we normally see on the bottom of slide out floors and that kind of stuff and these things like to wick water real bad so if that kitchen sink which is above there has had a leak at some point it probably has caused this or this water has moisture from the outside in with the heat has caused some of that issue i don't know but as you can see, this is going to be a little bit of a chore. Not quite sure how I'm going to resolve this just yet. So Brandon pulled up here a little uh, Class C Coachman Freelander. And you can see the Seal Tech machines in here. So they've been doing some Seal Tech work on it. But I wanted to kind of show you guys this. Look at that right there where that has separated. Screws are pulled out of that aluminum bar. Now you're going to ask, what's the, what's the solution to that? Probably going to pull all this out and we'll go in here with some some rivets and rivet that all back up and then reseal it because it's not too bad over here on this side but obviously <laughs> that's a problem well what a week had a lot going on here at shelburne rv this week appreciate everybody uh tuning in and watching got to see some of what i did this week and you know it's just it's just amazing all the different projects that we run into and the problems and all the other stuff that we do but I appreciate y'all, appreciate y'all watching and hanging in there with us. We got that uh, that Fury on refrigerator is out. Uh, the new one actually came in a little bit ago, and cousin Gary got it installed. So that one there, we're going to dispose of that next week. So you get to see see us do that because I don't have a ball bat here. So we got another little way we're going to get rid of that. But appreciate everybody watching. Hope everybody has a great weekend. And remember that this video is cousin Gary approved.